My name's Angelo and welcome to We Want Picks. Jacob and I are going to break down all of our bets for UFC Austin. We're going to walk you through what we did with our money and why we did it. Before we jump in, go to wewantpicks.com slash bets. We have five different online betting partners. If you sign up with any one of them and make a deposit, we send you 50 bucks as a thank you. That's wewantpicks.com slash bets. Jakey boy, I'll go first. I got four units going. And this is an interesting week because I'm very confident in my picks. But there weren't a ton of spots where I was like, oh, this is a slam dunk bet. So I tried to try to find some spots that work for me. Uh, I'm pretty agree. high. You disagree? All right. Well, we'll get to your bets in a no, second. I said, uh, no, I said 100% agree. Angela. Oh, that's right. I'm just used to arguing with you. I was, I was ready I know, for battle. I know. I, know. Um, I like Donald Cerrone a lot this week. And, and so many of you are high on Joe Lozon, which I get. He's a very intelligent guy, good grappler. But Joe Lozon was never – I mean, he, at his peak, Joe Lozon was one-third as good as Donald Cerrone. At his peak. And, I, you know, both these guys are aging out. And, and listen, I'm very high on Donald Cerrone. And a lot of it has to do with how he was at the weigh-in. So this fight is rebooked. He had diarrhea, throwing up, food poisoning. But he talked about, I can't train myself anymore. I, I actually had a real camp. I had real coaches. I had people pushing me. I need my son to see me win. And he just seems like a different person. So I'm going with Donald Cerrone here. One unit money line bet. Then uh, I like Garam Kutaralidzwe at minus 180, but that is plus three and a half points. What that means is I'm buying a round on the judges' scorecard. This is a really good fight. That's probably one of the best, most competitive fights on the entire card. I think Garam outright wins, but I bought a round on the judges' scorecard just to protect myself. The odds aren't amazing. They're minus 180, but probability-wise, that's like 66% or something to that effect. Yeah. I think more than 66% of the time, Garam takes at least one round, if not the fight against Ismagulov here. So one unit on that. If you want to do a bet similar to that, I have a one on Roman Delize as well. Exact same logic. I think he beats Kyle Dawkins outright. But just in case, I did just buy a round and I got it at minus 140. It is now plus 110. So I think that's a slam dunk bet. He's a world champion grappler fighting a good grappler. So... Anyway, both of those you're only going to get at Bet Online. So go to wewantpicks.com slash bets. Jump in the Bet Online. They are one of our five betting partners. And then I did a parlay. I wasn't, I, I always thought Phil Hawes was going to win this fight, uh, but I didn't necessarily think he was the best bet, right? I did not think he was a parlay piece. Then the weigh ins. And then all of a sudden, Duran wins the last man to the scale, looking a little small, took a little too much time. And Phil Hawes, yes, has a questionable chin. But his striking is very good. He has very good cardio now. He pushes the pace. So I actually do trust him quite a bit. I took him and Cody Steman. I think Cody, you know, listen, Eddie Wineland, a legend. He's been fighting for 20 years. That's 20 years of damage. I think Cody Steman stays in his face, pushes the pace, works in the takedown, six, you know, sticks with the striking game plan as well. And I think he gets it done. I put these two together, one full unit at minus one. 50, that's what I got going, Jakey. Why don't you walk through what you got? Yeah, coming off a, uh, a big week last week, and I lost all my money on the uh, Celtics this week, so I got to win it back. That's typically what I do. I make a bunch of money in the UFC, and I lose it on other sports. So luckily, there's aren't a lot of other sports going on right now, so now we can start building our bankroll back. Uh, lock of the week, Garam, come on. He, he should absolutely... I don't want to say dominate. In my mind, I think he dominates that fight. I don't want to jinx it too much. But the way that he was able to withstand the takedowns and get back to his feet against Gamrot, and I know a lot of people think that Gamrot won that fight. It doesn't matter to me. He was able to get back to his feet on the Gamrot takedowns against Demir. I don't think he should have really any issues, and the striking should be fantastic. He is a, a fantastic striker with the kicks. I think he can put Demir away. So I put two units at plus 135, and this line is kind of yo-yoed. It got down to like uh, plus 120. Now it's back up to what, plus 145, so it's people don't know what to do with this fight. As as, <laughs> as Angelo said, it should be a, a great, great fight. Um, it's be, I mean, this card in general is, is fantastic. Um, the next bet I feel even better about. I play this place this on Tuesday. I think it's plus 115 now. So it's moving a little bit after the weigh-ins. Obviously, Tony Kelly missed weight, looked awful on the scale. He was standing there swaying back and forth with his little red nose, like the clown that he is. So I took I I think that Adrian Yanez puts him out, and he's like a minus two. 
fifty, I think, something like that. So I just put uh, took the plus one twenty, put two units on it inside the distance. Tony Kelly, his last fight, he came out aggressive. He comes out aggressive against uh, uh, Adrian Yanez like that. He's going to get countered. Yanez is such a good boxer. And in that last fight, I know he won by stoppage, but he was gassing hard in that second round. With a bad weight cut on top of that, I think he's in some big, big trouble. Um, the next are both inside the distance decisional action bets. And this actually kind of tells you that the bookies think that Jeremiah Wells is a lot more dangerous than Joaquin Buckley, which is a little bit interesting, I guess. Um, obviously, you know... Um, Buckley has that flashy knockout, but, you know, Wells is the finisher. Wells against Court McGee. Court McGee doesn't really get finished as much, so maybe that's why um, type of situation. But, um, yeah, both these are the same the same type of bet. If they win inside the distance, I win my bet. If it goes to a decision because they're both against people that could out-wrestle them for the entire fight. So if they get out-wrestled and out-pointed and don't get finished, I get my money back. The only way I lose this bet is as if they get finished, and both of them are against people that don't really finish people, Court McGee um, and uh, the other wrestler. I can't remember his name right now, but I like Jeremiah these bets. Wells. No, Court McGee and then the guy yeah, that uh, Joaquin Buckley. Buckley oh, Duryev. Uh, the Russian. Yeah. yeah, 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 Duryev. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I like these bets um, for, for, for people that you feel are, are, are pretty dangerous against people that aren't as dangerous. So uh, you see the minus 185 for Jeremiah Wells, the plus 160 for Buckley and Buckley and and uh, Durayev were, were training partners, so they know each other well. It'd be interesting how that plays out. Um, the next one is uh, Duran Win. You know, it, I think he's a lot more dangerous than people expect. Obviously, the weigh-ins he came in late, but he's a guy that has missed weight before. So as long as he hasn't missed weight, I think that's a that's a that's a win for Duran Win in my mind because he has missed weight. He's looked awful, and I don't think he looked bad. I just think he took the entire two hours that he was allotted, weighed in. He's one eighty six. I with a plus three and a half. All he has to do is win a round. If Phil Halls is going to try and wrestle this guy, Phil Halls can easily get out wrestled, especially for a round. And Deron Wynn has shown, I know his 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 full gamut of fights isn't a lot, but in those fights, he's shown an iron chin. I mean, the guy is not a very good striker, and he's a short guy. So when he's making those entries, he's getting hit, and he hasn't been finished yet. So I think he can just win one round. I took it at plus 120. That actually has moved to like a plus 140 or plus 145. So I probably should have waited on that, but those are the ads I got. And the next one's a little bit interesting because usually for a five-round fight, the plus minus, you see the plus three and a half for Duran Win. Usually for five rounds, it's minus five five and a half or plus five and a half. Bet Online still has it listed as minus three and a half and plus three and a half for either Calvin Qatar or Emmett. So I took this thinking it's gotta be a typo. Maybe they're gonna fix it, but in this in this scenario, Calvin Qatar minus three and a half. Only has to win three rounds on two judges' scorecards and four rounds on one judge's scorecards. Where normally, when it's minus five and a half, he has to win 50 45 across three judges' scorecards. And if this goes to a decision, he I think he easily wins 48 47 on at least two judges and probably a 49 46 on, on another. So, in my mind, this is like a money line bet because he can still win inside the distance and I win the bet too. So, in my mind, this is a money line bet that instead of 230 money line, I'm getting minus 25. I, and again, I don't know if it's a typo. Normally, uh, every single time, it's still it's that way. You, you'd found that on Tuesday. It is still three right. and a half instead of five and a half. A lot of numbers were thrown at you. Basically, Jacob's saying Calvin Qatar is going to win a dominant decision, and he's willing to sell some points on the judge's scorecard for that. And instead of paying minus 230 for money line, he's getting minus 125 odds. And you, what you're basically saying, right, is you feel if I did money line, he's going to win by a dominant decision. So I might as well get better odds, and it's still going to be a dominant decision. Right, and, and, and I would, and I, yeah, and I would never do that if it was minus five and a half, because I, I think that Emmett might be able to steal one round. And usually it is that way, but for some reason they have it at, listed at minus three and a half. So I played it just to see how it is. Um, he just needs to win three rounds on a judge's on two judge scorecards and four on another. So uh, obviously, if it's split decision, I lose. If he loses, if he get finished, I lose that bet. But I got better odds, and uh, if he's gonna win, that's how I feel like he's gonna win. So uh, that's uh, I put two units on that. We'll see if they honor that or if they change stuff around because that's usually no, they not how they would have changed it already. Yeah, I don't know why they did that, and maybe it's factored into the odds, frankly. But they would have uh, if it was a typo, it would have been caught already. So for whatever reason, that's what they've done. And if you want to check that bet out and more. Go to wewantpicks.com slash bets first. Sign up with any one of our five betting partners and we send you 50 bucks as a thank you after you make a deposit. All of these interesting bets, the plus three and a half, inside the distance, this is no action. Those are all with Bet Online. They are my preferred uh, MMA betting website, but BetUS has much better customer service. 
and all of them have their pros and cons. Check it out now. We on pick.com slash bets and let us know your picks in our free discord. The link is in